Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today, we're exploring the strategy pattern, a powerful way to make your code more modular, flexible, and maintainable. And we'll implement it the right way in an ASP.NET Core using dependency injection. So, what exactly is the strategy pattern? Well, it's a behavioral design pattern, which basically means it's all about how objects behave and interact with each other. The idea is simple but powerful. You define a family of algorithms or behaviors, like different payment methods or sorting strategies, and encapsulate each one into its own class. This makes them easy to swap in and out without touching the main business logic. Not only does this eliminate messy if or switch statements cluttering your code, but it also allows selecting the algorithm at runtime, giving your application a whole new level of adaptability and scalability. And here's where it gets even better. It promotes the open-close principle. This means your code remains open for extension, but closed for modification making it easier to add new strategies without risking breakage or introducing bugs, while ensuring your design stays clean, extensible, and effortlessly maintainable. So, now that we know the strategy pattern is all about clean, extensible, and maintainable code, let's look at how it shines in a real-world use case. Your application needs to handle various ways users can pay, like credit card or PayPal. Instead of cluttering your code with endless if else statements, you can use the strategy pattern to encapsulate each payment method into its own class. All right, now that we've gone through the concept and the real-world use case of the strategy pattern, it's time for the fun part, implementation. Let's jump into the code and see how this works in action. I've already set up an ASP.NET Core 9 Minimal API project to get us started, so let's build out the payment strategy step by step. Let's first implement the payment processing logic without using any design patterns. We'll take a straightforward approach, but as you'll see, this method comes with its challenges. Once we've implemented this approach, I'll show you how to refactor it using the strategy pattern. By encapsulating each payment method into its own class, we'll eliminate the messy conditional logic, make our code more modular, and fully embrace the open-closed principle. Before we dive into the initial implementation, let's first clean up the program.cs file. Great! Let's set up the foundation by adding a services folder and creating an interface iPayment service. So, I press Shift plus F2 to quickly open the file creation dialog. Then, in the dialog box, I type services slash iPaymentService.cs to ensure the interface is neatly organized in the services folder. This will automatically create both the services folder and the iPaymentService.cs file. Next, I'm going to enhance our iPayment service interface by adding a new method that returns a string. This method, called process, will take two parameters, payment method, which is a string, and amount, which is a decimal. All right, let's implement the payment service. This will be our concrete class that fulfills the iPayment service interface. It's where we'll define the logic for processing payments based on the provided payment method and amount. Let's implement the iPayment service interface. In the process method, I'm going to implement the payment logic. If the payment method is credit card, it will return credit and amount. This represents a successful payment process using the credit card option. If the payment method is PayPal, it will return PayPal and amount. And for any other method, it will simply return null. Now, let's go ahead and register iPayment service in the dependency injection DI container. This setup makes it easy for the application to automatically resolve the interface and its implementation whenever needed. Here I am going to register the service as a scope service, which means a single instance of payment service will be created and used for each HTTP request. Let's implement our get endpoint slash pay. This endpoint will handle incoming requests for payment processing and interact with our iPayment service to execute the logic. This endpoint accepts two query strings, method and amount. The method parameter specifies the payment type, such as credit card or PayPal, while the amount parameter represents the transaction value. To handle these inputs, we inject the iPayment service into our controller, allowing access to the payment service implementation. First, I'm calling the process method from payment service by passing in the method and amount parameters. This will execute the payment processing logic based on the provided inputs and return a result, which could either be a valid payment response or null if the method is invalid. After calling the process method, we check if the returned result is null. If it is, 
that means the payment method isn't valid, so we return a bad request with a message saying it's invalid. This helps the client understand exactly what went wrong and avoids processing unsupported payment types. But if we get a valid result, we simply return an OK response with that result. All right, let's go ahead and run the application to see it in action. I've already written a request that hits our slash pay endpoint and passes in the payment method and the amount. And here, I'm passing PayPal as the payment method and 100 is the amount. All right, let's hit send on this request and see what we get back. We got 200 OK response with PayPal paid $100. Now let's try changing the payment method to credit card and send the request again. And just like before, we get a 200 OK response with output, credit card, paid $100. Now let's try passing in a payment method we haven't implemented yet, like Apple Pay and send request. And as expected, we get a 400 bad request and the response says, invalid payment method, Apple Pay. That's because we haven't added any logic for Apple Pay in our payment service yet. Right now, every time we need to support a new payment method, we have to go into the payment service and modify its internal logic that tightly couples our business logic to specific implementations and makes the code harder to maintain and scale. This violates the open-closed principle. The open-closed principle states that classes should be open for extension but closed for modification. That means we should be able to add new features, like supporting new payment methods, without having to modify existing code. This is where the strategy pattern comes in. With the strategy pattern, each payment method, like PayPal, credit card, or Apple Pay, will be represented by its own class, implementing a common interface. The payment service won't care which one is being used. It will just delegate the work. All right, now let's clean up the code and implement the strategy pattern. To start, I'm going to move the payment service class to its own file, just to keep things tidy and organized as we go. Next. I'm going to define a new interface called iPayment method. This will be the contract that all our payment types, like PayPal, credit card, will follow. Inside this interface, we have a method property. This just returns the name of the payment method, like PayPal or credit card. And second, the pay method, which takes in an amount and returns a string. All right, now that we've defined the iPayment method interface, I'm going to move it to a separate file as well. Let's go ahead and implement our first payment method, credit card payment. This class implements the iPayment method interface. The method property just returns the name of the payment method, which in this case is credit card. And the pay method returns a simple message showing the payment method and the amount being paid. Pretty straightforward. It's mostly just for demo purposes right now, but in a real world app, this could trigger the actual payment logic. All right, we've finished implementing the credit card payment class. Next, let's implement the PayPal payment class. To keep things simple and save some time, I'll copy the credit card payment class and update it for PayPal, changing the method to PayPal. This way, we maintain the same structure while customizing it for PayPal. Now, I'll move both the credit card payment and PayPal payment classes into separate files to keep everything clean and organized. All right. Now let's go ahead and update the payment service to work with our new payment classes. We're going to update the payment service primary constructor to inject an ienumerable iPayment method. This way, we can pass in a collection of payment methods, allowing us to easily work with any payment type we've defined, like credit card payment or PayPal payment. Next, let's update the pay methods logic. We're going to find the matching payment method based on the payment method parameter. This allows us to find the correct payment method at runtime. We're using first order fault here to find the first payment method in the payment methods collection that matches the payment method parameter. The equals method checks if the method property of each payment method matches the payment method string. And we use string comparison dot ordinal ignore case to make the comparison case insensitive. Here, I've renamed the payment method variable to method. Then, if we find a match, we'll call the pay method for that payment method, otherwise, we'll return null. All right, we've wrapped up the changes in the payment service class. We've updated it to use dependency injection and dynamically resolve the right payment method at runtime. Now, the final step here is to register our payment method classes, 
credit card payment, and PayPal payment into the dependency injection container. This way, all available payment methods can be automatically injected into the payment service. And we don't need to change our endpoint at all. Let's go ahead and run the application to see it in action. I'm passing PayPal as the payment method and 100 as the amount. We got a 200 OK response and response say, PayPal pay $100. Now let's try changing the payment method to credit card and send the request again. And just like before, we get a 200 OK response with say credit card pay $100. Let's change to Apple Pay and send request again. As expected, we get a 400 bad request and say invalid payment method, Apple Pay. Everything's working just the way we want it. Now, let's see how we can add support for Apple Pay. With our current setup, this should be quick and easy. To implement Apple Pay, I'll just copy the PayPal payment class and update it for Apple Pay. Since all our payment methods follow the same structure, it's just a matter of changing the class name and the method value. Next, I'll move the Apple Pay payment class to its own separate file to keep things organized, just like we did with the other payment methods. Now, let's register the Apple Pay payment class into the DI container, just like we did with credit card payment and PayPal payment, so it can be injected into the payment service. That's all. We don't need to make any changes to the payment service class, since it's already set up to handle any payment method we add. Now we've got credit card, PayPal, and Apple Pay all working seamlessly. All right, let's run the application now and see everything in action. I'll change the method to Apple Pay and send the request. Now we got a 200 OK response, say Apple Pay pay $100. That means our changes are working correctly and the Apple Pay method is integrated perfectly. And the best part, we didn't need to change any existing code in the payment service class when adding Apple Pay. Thanks to the strategy pattern, adding new payment methods is seamless and doesn't require us to modify the core logic. All right, that's it for today. I hope this tutorial helped you understand how to apply the strategy pattern to make your code more flexible and maintainable. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay updated on more .NET tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy coding!